Well, hello everybody again, whether it be evening, morning or afternoon. Hope you're all having a great time. So I'm going to read you a very interesting chapter from my new book, The Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs Insights. And this is from chapter one from the Testament of Joseph. The story is so interesting. I'm going to initially I'm just going to read the original text here because it's so well written by itself and I won't give too many explanations on this occasion. So here we go. Chapter one, Testament of Joseph or the eleventh son of Jacob and Rachel. The copy of the Testament of Joseph. When he was about to die, he called his sons and his brethren together and said to them, My brethren and my children, hearken to Joseph, the beloved of Israel. Give ear, my sons, unto your father. I have seen in my life envy and death, yet I went not astray, but persevered in the truth of the Lord. These my brethren hated me, but the Lord loved me. All his brethren were there, because Joseph was the first of them to die, the ripe old age of 110. The rest of his brethren died from about 113 all the way to 137 years old. Verse 6. They wished to slay me, but the God of my fathers guarded me. They let me down into a pit, and the Most High brought me up again. I was sold into slavery. And the Lord of all made me free. I was taken into captivity, and his strong hand succored me. I was beset with hunger, and the Lord himself nourished me. I was alone, and God comforted me. Just to understand that Joseph's eleven brethren were there, many with their wives, their children, their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren, they're all there. Joseph being the first of the patriarchs to pass away at 110 years old. Continuing, verse 12. I was sick and the Lord visited me. And in this book here of the 12 patriarchs, or the Testament of the 12 patriarchs, insights, all the original text is in boxes. Everything else is outside the boxes in different texts like Bible verses and also cross-references to other relevant verses, some from other apocryphal books and also a lot of comments and links as well to make it as interesting as possible and to explain the book, make it as easy as possible for people to understand. Because I know it was written in, in um, King James English and uh, a lot of it and uh, I, I, that's something I do know about, being English myself. Anyway, back to the story. I was sick, and the Lord visited me. I was in prison, and my God showed favor unto me, in bonds, and he released me. Slandered, he pleaded my cause. Bitterly spoken against by the Egyptians, and he delivered me. Envied by my fellow slaves, and he exalted me. Of course, you all know the story of Joseph backwards, I'm sure you do from when he was 17 at least, sold in, into slavery by his brethren out of jealousy and hatred because of his dreams. Very, very interesting story indeed. 19, I struggled against a shameless woman, urging me to transgress with her. But the God of Israel, my father, delivered me from the burning flame. 20. I was cast into prison, I was beaten, I was mocked, but the Lord granted me to find mercy in the sight of the keeper of the prison. For the Lord doth not forsake them that fear him, neither in darkness, nor in bonds, nor in tribulations, nor in necessities. For God is not put to shame as a man, nor as a son of man is he afraid, nor as one that is earthborn is he weak or affrighted.
But in all those things he gives protection, and in diverse ways doth he comfort, though for a little space he departs in try to try the inclination of the soul. In ten temptations he showed me approved, and all of them I endured. For endurance is a mighty charm, and patience giveth many good things. How often did the Egyptian woman threaten me with death? Potiphar's wife. How often she did give me over to punishment and then call me back and threaten me. And when I was unwilling to accompany with her, she said to me, Thou shalt be lord over me and all that is in my house, if thou wilt give thyself unto me, and thou shalt be as our master. But I remember the words of my father. And going to my chamber, I wept and I prayed unto the Lord, and I fasted in those seven years, and I appeared to the Egyptians as one living delicately. For they that fast, for God's sake, receive beauty of face. And if my Lord were away from home, I drank no wine, nor for three days did I take my food. But I gave it to the poor and sick. And I sought the Lord early, and I wept for the Egyptian woman of Memphis. For very unceasingly did she trouble me, also at night she came to me under pretense of visiting me. And because she had no male child, she pretended to regard me as a son. And for a time she embraced me as a son, and I knew it not. But later she sought to draw me into fornication. When I perceived it, I sorrowed unto death. And when she had gone out, I came to myself and lamented for her many days, because I recognized her guile and her deceit. And I declared unto the words of the Most High, if happily she would turn from her evil lust. Often, therefore, did she flatter me with words as a holy man, and guilefully in her talk praise my chastity before her husband, while desiring to ensnare me when we were alone. For she lauded me openly as chaste, and in secret she said unto me, Fear not my husband, for he is persuaded concerning thy chastity. For even should one tell him concerning us, he'd not believe it. Under all these things I lay upon the ground, and I besought God that the Lord would deliver me from her deceit. And when she had prevailed nothing thereby, she came again to me under the plea of instruction that she might learn the word of God. And she said unto me, If thou wilt that I should leave my idols, lie with me, and I will persuade my husband to depart from his idols. And we will walk in the law by thy Lord. And I said unto her, The Lord will not. Let those who reverence him live in uncleanness, nor did he take pleasure in them that commit adultery. For in those that approach him with a pure heart and undefiled lips. But she held her peace, longing to accomplish her evil desire. And I gave myself yet more to fasting and prayer, that the Lord might deliver me from her. And again at another time she said unto me, If thou wilt not commit adultery, I will kill my husband by poison, and take thee to be my husband. 45. I therefore, when I heard this, rent my garments, and I said unto a woman, Reverence God, do not this evil deed, lest thou be destroyed. For know indeed that I will declare this thy device unto all men. She therefore, being afraid, besought that I would not declare this device. And she departed, soothing me with gifts, and sending to me every delight of the sons of men. And afterwards she sent me food mingled with enchantments. 50. And when the eunuch who brought it came, I looked up and beheld a terrible man giving me with a dish a sword. And I perceived that her scheme was to beguile me. And when he had gone out, I wept, nor did I taste that or any other of her food. And so then after one day she came to me and observed the food and said to me, Why is it thou hast not eaten the food? And I said to her, It is because thou hast filled it with deadly enchantments. And how thou said, I come not near to idols, but to the Lord alone. Now therefore know, the God of my Father hath revealed unto me by his angel thy wickedness, and I have kept it to convict thee. If haply thou mayest see and repent, but thou mayest learn that the wickedness of the ungodly 
hath no power over them that worship God with chastity. Behold, I will take of it and eat before thee. And having said so, I prayed thus, The God of my fathers and the angel Abraham be with me, and ate. When she saw this, she fell upon her face at my feet, weeping. And I raised her up and admonished her. Then she promised to do this iniquity no more. But her heart was still set upon evil, and she looked around how to ensnare me, and sighing deeply, she became downcast, though she was not sick. And when her husband saw her, he said unto her, Why is thy countenance fallen? And she said unto him, I have a pain at my heart, and the groanings of my spirit oppress me. And so he comforted her, who was not sick. Then accordingly, seizing an opportunity, she rushed unto me, while her husband was yet without, and said unto me, I'll hang myself, or cast myself over a cliff, if thou wilt not lie with me. When I saw the spirit belly I was troubling her, I prayed unto the Lord, and I said unto her, Why, wretched woman, art thou troubled and disturbed, blinded through sins? Remember, if thou kill thyself, Astabo, the concubine of thy husband, thy rival, will beat thy children, and thou wilt destroy thy memorial from off the earth. She said unto me, Lo then, thou love me, let this suffice me, only strive for my ch life and my children, and I expect that I shall enjoy my desire also. But she knew not that because of my Lord I spake thus, and not because of her. For if a man hath fallen before the passion of a wicked desire, and become enslaved by it, even as she, whatever good thing he may hear with regard to that passion, he receives it with a view to his wicked desire. I declare therefore unto you, my children, that it was about the sixth hour when she departed from me, and I knelt before the Lord all day and all night, and about dawn I rose up weeping the while and praying for a release from her. At last, then, she lay hold of my garments, forcibly dragging me to have connection with her. When therefore I saw that in her madness she was holding fast to her garment, I left it behind and fled away naked. And holding fast to the garment, she falsely accused me. When her husband came, she he cast me into prison in his house, and the Maury scourged me and sent me into Pharaoh's prison. Remember, Joseph was only about 18 years old right now. And she was Potiphar's wife, and Potiphar was like third from Pharaoh in importance. But when I was in bonds, the Egyptian woman was oppressed with grief, and she came and heard how I gave thanks unto the Lord, and sang praises in the abode of darkness in the prison, and with glad voice rejoiced, glorifying God, that I was delivered from the lustful desire of the Egyptian woman. And often has she sent unto me, saying, Consent to, my, to fulfill my desire, and I will release thee from thy bonds. I will free thee from the darkness. And not even in thought did I incline unto her. For God loveth him who is in a den of wickedness combines fasting with chastity, rather than the man who is in king's chambers combines luxury with license. At paragraph 77. And if a man lives in chastity and desires also glory, and the Most High knows it expedient for him, he bestows this also upon me. How often, though, she was sick, did she come down to me at unlooked-for times, listened to my voice as I prayed, and when I heard her groanings, I held my peace. But when I was in her house, she was wont to bear her arms and breasts and legs that I might lie with her. She was very beautiful, splendidly adorned in order to beguile me. And the Lord guarded me from her devices. And that is the end of chapter 1. As I said, I've only read you the actual verses with a couple of tiny comments, but actually there are, in that one chapter alone, 52 comments I put in there, and a lot of Bible verses as well, because it's an amazing, amazing testament, the one of Joseph. Oh well, that's enough for me for now. I hope you enjoy reading that, and I do encourage you to get my latest book, my eighth book, The Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs, insights i think it's one of the most amazing manuscript i've ever read before because it's not just one writer it's 12 and how they thought 3700 years ago is very different than people think today i i found it very inspiring writing it reading it studying it researching it and i hope that you will 
get my latest book, which you can get at Amazon. It just came out on the 3rd of October 2022, about three days ago. Well, bye for now, everybody.